implications of the real-life eastern sky moonrise on the 14th war day late at night. Tata Kumudanathena Kamini Ganda Panduna Netranandena Chandrena Mahendri Digalangrata. This is verse 42 of uh, Drona Parva, chapter 159. From our viewpoint, uh, on Earth, on the 14th war night, the moon approaches the sun because the sunrise is going to occur in the east as well. And Mahendri Digalankrata means that the moon has adorned the eastern sky. So the moon is therefore approaching the sun because they're in the same part of the sky. So the moon can only approach the sun a few days from a Amavasya. So this means therefore that it's only a few days to an Amavasya. Uh, the east sky moon will approach the sun from our viewpoint uh, and that sun will also rise in the east. So from our viewpoint on the 14th war night, the eastern sky moon will approach the sun which will also rise in the east a few hours later. This means that that 14th war night is only a few days to an Amavasya. Thus, four days later on the 18th war day, it must be an Amavasya or very close to it. If we now go to the other reference, which is the Gadayuddha Parva reference, Rahus Chagra Sadaditya, Rahus Chagra Sadaditya, Aparvani Vishampati, Chakampecha Mahakampam, Prithvi Savanadruma, which is from Gadayuddha Parva, just before the Gadayuddha actually starts. And therefore, four days later, on the 18th war day, we are now sure that it must be an Amavasya. Thus, we are corroborating and cross-checking the 14th night, late war night moonrise, which is occurring in the eastern part of the sky with the Gadayuddha Parva reference, which is on the 18th war day. Therefore, we are able to say that this 18th war day is going to be an Amavasya. We in, uh, in 3067 BC, we can actually corroborate this 18th war day with an Amavasya absolutely perfectly. And in fact, we can corroborate it with the end of Balrama's pilgrimage, which as we know, Pushena Samprayato Smi Shravane Punaragataha. So he must come back on a Shravana Nakshatra day. That must coincide with the 18th war day, preferably in the afternoon. Now, if we look at this, we see that we have the 14th war day as the 8th of December. The 14th war night will become the 9th of December. And at 2.20 or thereabouts, the moonrise will occur in the eastern part of the sky. We are showing you that the red arrow, which is the distance between the moon and the sun. The sun is already at Altair or Shravana Nakshatra. And what is happening is basically on the 10th of December, this red arrow becomes smaller as the moon approaches the sun and then I'm showing you the 12th of December, which is our 18th war day, because this is the war day which we need to really fix. And what we are seeing over there is that the red arrow has become really small because the moon is approaching the sun towards an Amavasya. The Amavasya will actually occur in 3067 BCE. The 18th war day, it will occur at approximately four in the afternoon. So we are corroborating this absolutely correctly. Our first day of the war is therefore reverse counted from here at 25 November 3067 BC. Our 14th war day is 8 December uh, 3067 BC. And our last war day is 12th of December 3067 BC. So there's no, there's no gap between the uh, return of Balrama, 42nd day of his pilgrimage and the last day of the war, which is the 18th war day, which is 12th of December, which is Shravana Nakshatra and Anamavasya. We are fulfilling all the conditions of Balrama's pilgrimage.
we can actually show you these two timelines which we are corroborating perfectly on the 18th day of the war and you can actually see the third pushya if some of you are following my posts then you are able to see that my third pushya uh, is occurring on day 4 uh, which is november 28th and day 5 uh it goes across to day 5 uh at 12 midnight uh, right up to sunrise uh which is november 29th um so the pushya nakshatra spans two days in my timeline now the question is what happens in 5561 bce now i'm showing you over here that gada yuddha parva reference but none of this is actually fulfilled at all in 5561 bce so what we are seeing in 5561 bce is the war does not end on an amavasya as the epic is actually showing instead the war starts on an amavasya so the entire 18 days of war timeline is actually reversed is a complete fault in the timeline this war timeline is supposedly starting with a solar eclipse in 5561 bce So uh, this is supposed to be if you look at the book then this is 16th of October 5561 BCE uh, except that there is a basic problem even in this and that problem is that the solar eclipse is actually occurring on the 17th of October 5561 BCE it's actually occurring one day late there's a mistake in the calculations now what that means is that this is going to cause serious problems for the entire war timeline which anyway is already reversed it's already a mistake it's already a fault it cannot start on an amavasya it has got to end on an amavasya the problem is it doesn't do any of those things it basically starts on an amavasya that war timeline first day is actually wrong it's actually starting at 17th of october that means that the war timeline either only lasts for 17 days which may be the case in 5561 bce anything can happen or it is also possible that you are shifting that 18 day of the war further the first question though what you're going to ask me is how can somebody then take the war to start on a namavasya well this is a very interesting point and this justification in 5561 bce for the entire war timeline especially the last 7 days of the war is done with the help of moon phase analogies the moon phase analogies which are not real astronomy observations of the sky but they are simply analogies of the warriors faces and they are used regardless of the absurdities which they actually introduce and here's an example what you will see when the analogies are brought to light what happens is that there is a full moon at krithika on the 12th day of the war if you believe the analogies then there should be a full moon at vishakha on the 16th day of the war and then a full moon at punarvasu at the 17th day of the war and the problem with these full moons so this is basically a krithika purnima followed by vaishakha purnima followed by punarvasu purnima and these are all separated by miles actually if you actually look at the nakshatras you can see that they are separated by huge amount of time they are actually separated by months in real life so this creates an absurdity but it's ignored completely in 5561 bc anything goes so let's go a bit further if you look at the analogies then the analogies include some real absurdities there's a full moon on all days from day 10 to day 17 and even afterwards and not only that if you look at it there will be three lunar eclipses which are occurring and there also what is not mentioned in the book is that there are two solar eclipses are also occurring on the 14th or the 13th day as it might be the case or the 15th day as may be the case there's two solar eclipses also which occur so it's a bit like saying every day is a full moon day uh, nearly every day you can say is also a lunar eclipse and maybe even solar eclipses so if this if these analogies are to be taken to be true they introduce a huge amount of absurdities but that's all ignored in 5561 bce 
Now we come to the rigorous conditions of Balrama's pilgrimage, and the verse is very clear: "Chatwarim shadhanyadya dwejame nistratasya vai pushena samprayato smi shravane punaragata." And then, of course, he says that "Shishya yorve gada yudham drishtu kamo smi madhva." So Balrama wants to see the gada yudh between his two star pupils, Bhimsen and Duryodhan. So he comes back on the 18th day. the pilgrimage and pushena samprayatosmi so he must start out on a pushya nakshatra and he must return on a shravana nakshatra now let's see how that actually should happen so if you look at it this is the pushya nakshatra and that will be the shravana nakshatra which is separated in in real life these two nakshatras will be separated if you take one revolution around the zodiac in addition in consideration they nearly always 42 days apart hmm? so this is how you actually know that the verse does mean those two nakshatras rather than anything else and we can actually show you in 3067 bc how that actually happens in 42 days it starts on a pushya and then it goes all the way around the zodiac there's another pushya which we showed you is the third pushya which is occurring uh in our tripushya theory and that occurs in the war timeline on day 4 and day 5 and then after that you basically end up at shravana nakshatra on the last day which we just showed you and now let's see what has happened in 5561 bce the best part about this is yet another timeline is reversed balrama goes in the opposite direction he goes from shravana nakshatra to pushya nakshatra and of course that's going to be 42 days in the 18 day war timeline except there's a peculiar problem which has occurred and what is that particular problem which has occurred because we told you the miscalculation in the 5561 bc first day of the war because that solar eclipse which is supposed to occur on the first day of the war on 16th of october is actually definitely occurring 24 hours later uh, of course that solar eclipse is also invisible from kurukshetra it is only visible from antarctica let facts not stop us in getting in the way of a good story so this miscalculation means that the either there is a 17 day war timeline in 5561 bc which is also possible i suppose or that balrama misses pushya nakshatra completely because that pushya nakshatra is actually over on that new 17th day which you used to be the 18 day of that timeline is actually over by 1230 at noon so after that it's ashlesha nakshatra so if we say that balrama comes back and he's supposed to somehow come to that 18 day of the war the 18 day of the war is now ashlesha so there's a real problem with this timeline so this timeline now is completely broken right so so just to give you an idea Uh, it means that balrama misses pushya nakshatra completely even if you accept the theory that he is coming back to pushya rather than starting on a pushya because this war time this war timeline and balrama's pilgrimage timeline are both completely mistaken in this particular war uh, date proposal there's so many mistakes uh, but these are just two of the uh, extreme blunders which have been committed over here so what what all has gone wrong over here well all the conditions have failed the start day is wrong the end day is wrong so the start day of the pilgrimage is wrong the end day of the pilgrimage is wrong there's a mistake in the or miscalculation in the first day war timeline uh, hence the 18th war day is now the 17th war day where the pushya nakshatra is actually already ended at 1230 noon so either this has 17 days in the war timeline I only 17 days in 5561 BC but as I said let's not let facts get in the way of a good story or Balrama arrives one day early and now 18 day of the war is Ashlesha now this isn't a peculiar problem which is just in 5561 BC I will show you in future films how the rigorous conditions for Balrama's pilgrimage are failed by virtually every researcher was ever tried to reproduce this except in 3067 BC where the war will start on 25th of November uh, 3067 BC this is my this is my theory for 
or my modification of the theory ori originally proposed by Achar and uh, Raghavan, I suppose, before it uh, for 3067 BC. And what I'm saying is that the war starts on 25th of November 3067 BC. It ends of 12th of December 3067 BC. That means that we are basically fixing the 18th day of the war, not going for the first day of the war initially, which is the which is the mistake, I suppose, which has been made by Raghavan. So we are fixing the 18th day of the war, and then we go and do a reverse counting, uh, basically from there. Thank you very much, and hopefully you will enjoy my other films also.